So, without further ado, let's get into it. Pay TV versus free TV. Wait, no, it's pay TV versus the ACBC? Now cue that intro music, boy! initial plan was to title this video pay tv versus free tv reason being that a lot of us are or should be aware of the fact that there are now quite a lot of different streaming platforms available for us in south africa or to be more specific pay tv and there's really only one player when it comes to free tv only thing is that player that's known as the scbc is not actually free now we'll be breaking down all of the different subscription fees regarding each and every one of these different streaming platforms that I will be discussing in this video. You will pick up in this video that I will be pitting major streaming platforms against the SEBC. No! Now, of course, I do realize that that is unfair. And how can the SEBC compete against major streaming platforms? I do feel that they stand a chance. So. Stick around and find out why I say so. Crash course, what is pay TV? It's TV that you pay for, of course. Yeah. Now, there may be some form of free to air TV that's available to us in South Africa that I may have missed. If that's the case, drop a comment down below and let me know. Bear in mind that there should absolutely be no subscription fees attached to it whatsoever, irrespective of how small that fee is. Number one, Netflix. Number two, Amazon Prime Video. Number three, Apple TV. Number four, the new kid on the block, or rather the new kid on our block, Disney Plus. Number five and six are longtime familiar faces, and that's DSTV and the SABC. Let's start with that sixth and final option, the SABC. Advantage number one in the SABC's favor. You don't need an internet connection when it comes to the SABC. All you need is a TV and that TV must just be hooked up to an antenna and Bob's your uncle. They do their best to cater for all South Africans by playing locally made content. And this second advantage is my favorite thing in favor of the SABC. You can view their content via your DSTV account. It's standard on all DSTV packages. And speaking of DSTV, they are option number five. Advantage number one in favor of DSTV. They have the widest range of content. DSTV have been informing and educating and entertaining a lot of us for a very long time. And their model works pretty well. I may not agree with some of their practices, for an example, some of their prices are stupid expensive and it's probably justified, but it's still expensive nevertheless. Advantage number two in favor of the SEBC. They are pretty aggressive when it comes to remaining as a key player in paid TV. To be more specific, I thought it was pretty clever of them to give you the option to either sign up to Netflix or add your Netflix account to your DSTV package, all from the comfort of your couch using that familiar DSTV Explorer remote of yours. And they recently started giving you the option to be able to add on top of Netflix Disney Plus. I'm struggling really hard here because DSTV actually has a lot going for them and I just cannot stand them. Anyways, a third advantage in favor of DSTV is that they have the financial muscle to be able to give us loads and loads of content. And before all of these streaming platforms started to flood our internet highways, DSTV had exclusive rights to bring us content owned by 
HBO, Disney, and Hallmark, just as an example. Of course, things have changed with these streaming platforms coming into the market with their own subscription-based services. The next three options and streaming platforms I have yet to explore thoroughly. Starting with option number four, Disney Plus, which was recently launched in South Africa not so long ago. And Disney Plus is one of the reasons why I decided to do this video. I did recently sign up for Disney Plus, but a month after it was launched, I have been eagerly waiting for the arrival of the streaming platform in South Africa for about, give or take, two years. And I was super stoked when I found out they were finally, finally coming into the country because I am a huge, I mean, huge Marvel fan. So naturally, I had to add Disney Plus to my personal list of paid TV services that I subscribe to. So instead of relying on backdoor websites to stream Marvel content, and that's if you can find good quality content to stream via these dodgy websites, better to go straight to the source and subscribe to Disney Plus. So Marvel content being advantage number one in favor of Disney Plus. Advantage number two. So far, I have to say that I am impressed with the other non-Disney content that Disney Plus offers via their subscription service. Time will tell how they will compete against another big giant, Netflix, who essentially do the same thing. With invested interests in producing in-house content, acquiring content from other production companies to stream via their services. Third option. Apple TV. I've only recently subscribed to Apple TV and have yet to really explore their content fully. From what I've seen so far, they have some serious looking shows. I mean, they legit have some seriously serious, intense shows. Dull, boring, drama. But speaking from a smart homeowner's perspective and an avid Apple user, if you have an iPhone, then you need an Apple Watch. Then you might as well throw in a Mac, a MacBook, a HomePod mini or two, an iPad and some accessories and, 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 and. The point that I'm trying to drive home here is the more Apple devices that you add to your Apple ecosystem, the more you'll enjoy Apple as a brand. They know how to build a system that orbits around your whole life. So if you already have some sort of an Apple device, then Apple TV sort of makes sense. That is advantage number one in favor of Apple TV, the Apple ecosystem and all of its benefits. Advantage number two in favor of Apple TV, the price of their subscription isn't crippling. Pricing options will follow later on. Option number two, Amazon Prime Video. Like Disney Plus, Apple TV and Netflix, Amazon Prime have their own in-house content exclusive to their platform. That is an advantage for Amazon Prime Video. It may not be a strong advantage, but it does count in their favor nevertheless. Advantage number two in favor of Amazon Prime Video. Like Apple TV, Amazon Prime Video also ties in well into their own smart home based ecosystem. As for their content, I can't say much on that because I haven't yet decided to subscribe to their platform yet. Finally, the option that many of us know about, Netflix. Advantage number one in favor of Netflix. They have a healthy mix of family shows, kiddie shows, big bluster movies and series. Advantage number two in favor of Netflix is that you can add it to your current DSTV account. And in all honesty, they have one of the cleanest and easiest user interface. Number one, Netflix. At some point, you will be hit with geofencing difficulties. To be more specific, Netflix US is different from Netflix UK. And Netflix UK is different from Netflix India. You will not see all that Netflix has to offer at all times at all places. Here's another disadvantage. You need an internet connection in order to access content from Netflix. Unless you download your shows or movies to your cell phone, tablet, laptop, or whatever device. Moving along, Amazon Prime Video. 
like Netflix, you will need an internet connection in order to access their content. Number three, Apple TV. It's the same thing here, internet connection. And let me not forget. Disney Plus, you need an internet connection. And I'm not sure, but I think you might actually be hit with geofencing difficulties here as well. But I really do hope that I'm wrong. I'll only know for sure as time goes on. Comment down below if you are subscribed to Disney Plus or if you know for sure that they are not going to be hitting us with any geofencing difficulties like Netflix. Number five, DSTV. Hmm, let's see here. What are the disadvantages when it comes to DSTV? I'm trying to think what are the different disadvantages when it comes to DSTV? They're a bully. They're expensive. They refuse to cater to different people who are not interested in the packages that they currently have to offer. <sighs> I had to get that out the way. I mean, seriously. In South Africa alone, DSTV has about 12 million subscribers. Recently, they have taken a knock in their subscription numbers and that's largely due to the fact that a lot of people have realized that there's more out there that dstv is not offering then there's the fact that for the longest time dstv has had exclusive broadcasting rights when it comes to sports and this by the way is how i believe that dstv is holding us hostage take super sport away or the exclusive broadcasting rights that they have to sports and what is dstv really and as for news Getting a hold of all sorts of news has never been easier. Even with radio still being a big deal, you can get all the relevant news and then some right on the internet. Number six, the SEBC. Their content is old and outdated. They're still playing content that I watched way back in the day when I was just a little boy. And that might not look like it is a big deal, but trust me, it is. Especially when you consider the fact that it takes them about, mm, last I checked, 12 to 18 months to play new movies. But I do have to admit that I do feel sorry for the SEBC. Were it not for our country's politics, the SEBC would be thriving and managing just fine, even amidst all the different streaming competitors out there. And of course, there is the issue of funding. Not all South Africans are paying for their TV license. And that puts the SEBC at a huge disadvantage. Now that's about some seriously bad news for the SEBC because they are the local guy who have to compete against all of these different heavyweights. Add that to all of their different internal problems. Our government's meddling and people not paying for their TV license. The SEBC loses all day, every day, easy. And they are supposed to be that service that we all want, no matter what new fancy streaming service comes into the country. And that's why I said that I will be pitting them against major streaming platforms. Comment down below if you think that the SABC can be saved. Currently prices are as follows for all of these different services, starting with the SABC. First time applicants for a television license must pay the full annual fee of about 265 Rand. After your first year, your bill will come down to about 28 Rand a month. DSTV premium package is about 839. Disney Plus is 119 Rand. Apple TV is 84 Rand and 99 cents. Amazon Prime Video, a shockingly cheap 79 Rand. And Netflix coming in at an interestingly high rate for about 199 rand versus the other big players mm, interesting which services do i personally recommend honestly i say go for netflix because it's a proven workhorse that has put in the time and has really gained a good following in the country a lot of people worldwide not just in the country are subscribed to netflix then add disney plus for an even wider variety of family shows, movies, and series. And if you must, if you really must, stick with DSTV, simply because, well, you know, sports. But watch out, DSTV. For those of us paying close enough attention, we know that there are discussions that are taking place where there's a pretty huge possibility of you losing your exclusive broadcasting rights. That spells serious trouble for DSTV. So if you don't clean up your act, 
you're gonna lose a whole lot more subscribers than you have already. As I wrap up this video, let me quickly mention the fact that there are other cheaper DSTV packages available out there. You have to go online, do the research and pick a package that suits you. And the same goes for Netflix as well. Have a look into it and find out what will best suit you. There is one major streaming service that I did not mention and that is Showmax. The only reason why I didn't mention Showmax is that it is owned by DSTV and Showmax plays content that at some point in time already played on DSTV and it will play on DSTV again at some point. It's also available for free for all premium subscribing customers. So I really just didn't see the point of blowing their horn because I'm sure it's pretty obvious. I just don't like them. Just like how I don't like the fact that Amazon Prime Video and Apple TV have the nerve to charge you extra whenever you want to rent a movie. That's a big blunder on their part if you ask me. Anyways, that's it from me folks. So until the next one, peace out and God bless.